but it's not a high protein. So often, very often, I watch videos from fellow vegans, whether they're what I ate today's or recipe videos or like, you know, if lunch recipes, dinner recipes, usually lunch and breakfast, I would say, that are pretty low in protein. I talk about it a lot. I talk about it a lot because I see it so often. Vegans who don't seem to care too much or put too much emphasis on protein-rich plant foods in their own lives and in terms of like promoting, you know, foods to others. A very recent example, I saw this video yesterday, I think, from The Chic Natural. This is actually a channel I watch and I've seen a lot of her quick and easy meals compilation type videos where she does have like a lot of meals with protein and whatnot. But this one I found fairly disappointing. One of the meals is just pasta and bread. A little bit of vegetables in there too, but the calories are coming from pasta and bread mostly. There's no protein source. You know, if the pasta were one of the protein pastas, that would be one thing, but it's not. It's just, you know, semolina, just white pasta. So yeah, it's quick and it is easy. It's, there's no doubt about that, but um, not exactly nutritious or filling, I would say. Especially when we consider other meals that vegans are often eating. So if you look at a lot of the vegan breakfast recipes, they're often just kind of fruit smoothies with maybe a little bit of nut butter or oatmeal with a little bit of nut butter. They don't have very much protein. So when you top that off with lunch that also has very little protein, well now you're relying on dinner to pack in all of your protein and that's going to be pretty hard to do for vegans. Obviously a lot of Americans do that. They'll eat, you know, sugary cereal or toast and coffee or whatever for breakfast or no breakfast at all. And then just whatever, even like pastries sometimes for lunch. And then they pack in all their protein at dinner. Well, if you're eating meat, that's not that hard to do because meat is such an intense uh, source of protein. It's just got so much protein in terms of weight, right? But for vegans, it's going to be a lot harder because typically our protein sources are a little bit higher in calories or higher in volume. So it's just not going to be possible for us in most cases to get all of our protein in one meal. And ideally, you don't want to do that anyway. You want your protein spread out. You want to feel satisfied after every meal. And if you're trying to build muscle, that might be better. It's not actually clear. There's at least one or a couple studies that found it didn't matter, even if you're getting in like 80 grams of protein just in one meal, that it doesn't really matter. But yeah, not super clear on that. So probably better to try to eat balanced meals and to try to get your protein throughout the day fairly evenly. And it's not just that recipe. The next one is also not super great. It's just flour tortillas with some hummus, mushrooms, spinach, and a whole lot of fruit. So, you know, obviously that's healthy in terms of fruit and spinach and hummus and whatnot, but in terms of protein, that's not a lot. Hummus is kind of a source of protein. It's got so much fat. Most of the calories are coming from fat. Flour, tortilla, mushrooms. Mushrooms are a good source of protein in terms of calories. Mushrooms are very, very low in calories. You have to get eat a lot of mushrooms to, you know, get a significant amount of protein from them. Same with spinach, right? So yeah, I wouldn't consider that a super great source of protein. You could make it much better. Number one, you could use a hummus that's made from, or at least partially made from edamame. That would bump up the protein a lot. You could also use a protein wrap. I really, really like the Mission Plant Powered Wraps, I think is what they're called. Those are super awesome. And then cut out some of the fruit and replace it with something that actually has protein. The next one's better. It's got some black beans at least. And I would include, again, just changing the wrap instead of using a flour tortilla, use one of the, the protein tortillas. The next one has quinoa, also a good source of protein. And then the last one is just a stir fry. I thought it had tofu in it, but it doesn't. It has just a few mushrooms and some vegetables and more bread. <laughs> so you've got bread, you've essentially got bread and bread, more pasta and bread and no real protein source. So yeah, not great. And when I went down to the comments, I couldn't find any comment mentioning protein and like, hey, maybe some of these don't, don't have enough protein for like a meal. You know, it's supposed to be lunch. It's supposed to be a meal. It should probably have some protein in it. Obviously it has some protein. I know people are like every, all food has 
protein unless you're eating just, you know, table sugar, like even fruit has protein. Yes, but it has tiny, tiny, tiny amounts of protein. There's a reason they're not considered a protein source, right? If you eat just fruit, you're not going to get enough protein. Now, one where a lot of people did mention the protein is another recent video, this one from Hannah McNeely. I just talked about her monogamy video recently. She offers up some snacks, easy snacks for pregnancy, vegan and high protein. And like I said, the comments were like, no, <laughs> no, <laughs> these are not high protein. So I watched the first snack idea, which was just apple and nut butter. I think it was almond butter. You know, it's a, it's a fine snack, apple, peanut butter or nut butter or whatever. You've got some fat, you got some healthy carbs from the apples, some healthy carbs from the nuts too, um, a little bit of protein. Yeah, it's not a bad snack, but is it high protein? No, I would not consider that high protein. What is high protein exactly? There isn't like an exact definition, but for the most part, I see it defined as 20% protein. So in terms of uh, a snack, a high protein snack or meal, um, you probably want to look for something that is 20% or more protein. Apple and almond butter together are not 20%. I'm going to guess maybe 12 using chronometer by the way people always ask me what i use i use chronometer because it's just what i've always used honestly i don't know if it's better than any others <laughs> i have no idea it's just the one i use okay i put in one apple and two tablespoons of almond butter i think that's like a typical snack that is 286 calories seven grams of protein eight percent Ooh, i was way off it's eight percent protein not 20. So yeah, I, I think by any standard, even vegan standards, which vegans tend to consider things that don't have much protein as high protein, as, as you can tell, um, I think even by most vegan standards, that's not high protein. Fruit has protein as well, but it's the nut butters that have lots. I wouldn't say they have lots. They're, they're a decent source of protein, certainly compared to a lot of other vegan foods, they have lots. Yeah, if we look at almond butter, it's 12% protein. So not saying these foods are unhealthy because they don't have, they're not high protein foods. Almond butter is great. I eat nut butters all the time. It's just not a high protein food. It's a, a decent protein food. It's got a lot of calories, right? A lot of fat and nuts. All right. So then we have these muffins which I don't, again, how, how is this high protein? It's cashews, flour, sugar that that's all it is there's no there's no protein source in here there's no high protein thing in here and she said she eats it with like vegan butter and jam she says gluten-free flour certainly you could use like a chickpea flour or something i don't know how good that would taste but that would give you a lot more protein than a rice flour or it looks like what she's using is millet and i'm not sure what else but yeah still <laughs> not a great source of protein. And man, these are, they just look awful. She says they're very, very good and maybe they are. And you know, look, I make some nasty looking food, but man, these just look terrible. <laughs> they look like weird ass gluten-free cashew muffins, you know? So I guess that's good. They look like what they are. You're not being fooled. <laughs> What's nice about the Good & Gather line is that you can be confident when you're purchasing these products for your family because they not only taste great, but they're all about the four no's. No artificial flavors, no synthetic colors, no artificial sweeteners, and no high fructose corn syrup. High fructose corn syrup is just, it's sugar. It's no different from other sugar. It's sugar. <laughs> and artificial sweeteners are fine. Artificial colors, it's it's fine. Okay, next we have black bean falafel, sweet. I would open up one of the falafel patties to make sure it's cooked all the way through. Oh, you can tell she's really pregnant, man. I, I feel for her, I can hear <sighs> having to take the breaths. <laughs> it's funny going back and watching like older videos of mine. I can always tell like how far along I am even without like seeing the date or anything just based on like my breathing <laughs> and having to <sighs> just constantly. Uh, good times, but not at all. Yeah, these are great. The recipe is three cups of cooked black beans and some spices and stuff. It doesn't have like 
any fat in it, so it's probably not the tastiest thing, but certainly it's going to have more protein per calorie, right, without the added fat in there. Fat's very high in calories. And adding some hummus, again, has like a little bit of protein. Some cucumber, yeah, that's a great snack. Very likely high protein, again, if we're going by the 20%. So, all right, one out of three. <laughs> not great, but <laughs> better than nothing, I guess. Also, spinach is very high in protein, very, very high, so feel free to add as much. Again, calories though, it's so low in calories. It's a great source per calorie, but how much spinach do you have to eat <laughs> to get any meaningful amount of protein? So eight ounces of spinach, eight ounces, that's half a pound of spinach, has 6.5 grams of protein, 52 calories. Again, great source of protein in terms of calories, but Who's going to eat eight ounces of spinach? Even in a salad, that's a lot, but especially in a smoothie, that's just not realistic. She definitely doesn't have eight ounces in that smoothie. Bananas, blueberries, a little bit of spinach, a little bit of nut butter, and some almond milk. So that's not going to be a lot of protein. It's going to be a lot of calories. She is making a huge smoothie, so absolutely not a high protein snack. Next snack is guac with dippers. I just had this with some fresh vegetables, snap peas, carrots, and bell pepper, along with some corn chips, and it's fast, easy, high protein. What does she think protein is? Maybe she doesn't know what protein is. <laughs> Maybe she's confusing protein and carbs. Is this high carb? Absolutely. Is it high protein? No. It's a great, healthy little snack. Guacamole, vegetables, a little bit of chips as well. Great snack, but not, not a lot of protein. And you can air pop your own or buy a bag. Why are you pouring it everywhere? And throw nutritional yeast on top if you're feeling super vegan. And it's really delicious and it's just a nice thing to kind of snack. But it's not high protein. I love popcorn. You guys know I love popcorn. I eat popcorn almost every single day. It's amazing. I actually had popcorn last night with a bunch of nutritional yeast on it. It's delicious. I'm like licking the nutritional yeast like off, like you know, scooping it with my fingers, licking it off my fingers. Disgusting. If you're eating popcorn with nutritional yeast, that actually is, it depends, I mean, you have to use a fair amount of nutritional yeast, but even just a tablespoon is like, I think a few grams of protein, something like that. So yeah, that's not, that's not a bad snack in terms of protein. But if you're just having popcorn like she is, no, it's not a high protein snack. Ice cream, she, she's gonna add protein powder. I know it. I feel it. No, she's not. You can use cacao or cocoa. If you know the difference, then God bless you. <laughs> okay, that was pretty funny. What is the difference? I don't know. <sighs> no protein powder, of course. I don't think she uses protein powder. Um, yeah, fine. Great. <laughs> Not a high protein snack. Especially for pregnancy, right? It's easy snacks for pregnancy. Well, when you're pregnant, you need a little bit more protein, anywhere from 75 to 100 grams a day. Uh, and for vegans, it's probably a little bit higher than that for, you know, bioavailability reasons. Typically, even when we're not pregnant, we probably should aim for a little bit more protein because fiber and whatnot affects the digestibility. Not a big deal, but it is a big deal <laughs> if all of your snacks and all of your meals are lower in protein. And getting 75 to 100 grams of protein a day when you're pregnant, um, unless you were just eating a whole, whole bunch of calories, which, you know, you're not supposed to. It's, what is it, the first trimester. It's not recommended to eat any more than just a normal amount, you know, for your for your height, age, whatever. And then for the second trimester, I think it's at adding like 250, 300 calories, something like that. And then for the third, it's like another 250, 300. I think that's right. So it's gonna be really hard for vegans to hit even that 75 if your snacks are vegetables and guacamole and coconut ice cream. And then for breakfast, you're having some huge fruit smoothie without protein powder or anything, right? So. Yeah, uh, it's it's a problem. Again, with that video, like every comment I saw was just like, what? This is not, these are not high protein. Um, but again, with the other video, I didn't see any comments like that. And I see stuff like that just 
all the time, all the time with these, like, here's seven easy vegan breakfasts, and like half of them are, have just no protein source. That's why I really appreciate the fitness community getting into veganism, because most of these people know the importance of protein, and so you see them with every single meal, even every single snack, they have some sort of protein source. And I was gonna say, improving the protein, obviously with the smoothie, you could add some protein powder, probably remove a little bit of the fruit, so it's not just so high calorie again that's like a that's a pretty intense snack for those of us who aren't pregnant if you're pregnant that might be perfect right also switching the almond milk for so soy milk which is a good source of protein the guacamole again you could do like an edamame guacamole variation there's one that um isa has that i really really like i can't remember which book of hers it's in but it's very tasty you could even use some bean chips they have those bean chips there's one brand that's pretty good most of them it's like the texture and everything i don't like them but there's one brand that's pretty good. I still don't buy them because for me it's just like either I'm going to have chips or fuck it, I'm not going to have chips. You know what I mean? But uh, they're not bad and they have, you know, decent amount of protein. So yeah, definitely some improvements to make. Again, that stir fry recipe, adding some tofu or tempeh or even some mock meats in there, right? So there are lots of different ways that you can increase protein on a vegan diet. It's just... It's kind of disappointing how many recipes I see that just do not emphasize protein, especially when so many people still complain about not feeling satisfied on a vegan diet. And it's not always calories. Sometimes it's just, you know, when you're going from eating meat and meals with meat and milk and cheese, you know, sources of protein to now I'm just having pasta and bread for a meal. Yeah, you know, it, it might not feel very satisfying. You might be hungry again in an hour. Anyway, that's it for me. I hope you enjoyed it. Subscribe, support the channel, patreon.com slash unnaturalvegan, and I will have a new video soon. One thing I want to mention, I actually started an OnlyFans. <laughs> so people have been recommending it, asking me to start one for, I don't know, a few weeks or something. I see it like randomly pop up. And I told partner and he was like, you should do it, but just do like, stupid stuff just like really stupid stuff and i was like okay so i started it like as a joke but um i actually got two fans guys i have two fans on there that's really exciting so i'm gonna keep it going and i'm actually gonna post things regularly because now it's like well now there are actually people paying money so i have to take this seriously now so yeah i'm just gonna use it as a way to post things that i want to post but I don't because I don't want to put it on the channel and it's just like meh so I don't end up doing it so it's just going to be a whole lot of kind of random stuff just stuff I feel like putting on there I just did one where I do a uh, a get ready with me how exciting is that where I put on my makeup and I just talk about things I talked about Trump and I don't remember what else a bunch of stuff it's like 20 minutes long <laughs> of course <laughs> it's like the shortest video I can do is 20 minutes Go over there and check it out if you're interested, and yeah, I will have a new video soon-ish. Okay, hopefully, hopefully this will work. I've got the kids in the living room watching shows. <laughs> hopefully that will keep them occupied for a couple minutes. I've got to stand up. I messed up my back. It's actually a little bit better, maybe. Uh, it's been so great. And so yesterday I went to clean and usually when I clean, it's like 15 minutes and then my back hurts. Cause like a lot of cleaning is like bent over, scrubbing stuff, pushing stuff in front of you, vacuum off, you know, stuff that's just real bad if you have low back pain. So usually it's like 15, maybe 20 minutes. And then I got to lay on the couch. So I went to clean the kitchen floor, still felt okay. Did a little bit more, still felt okay. So then I was like, I'm just going to clean for like five hours. Yeah, maybe don't do that. So last night it was like, oh no. <laughs> and then this morning, oh no. But it's maybe feeling a little bit better. I went for a walk and, you know, just been taking it easy. But I don't want to test it by sitting down for an hour or whatever to, to film. So that's why I'm standing here in toddler's room and I've got my glasses off because glare from the window I'm sure will be really annoying. So yeah. That's what we're doing. We'll see how this goes. <laughs> oh. Oh! 
Oh my god, I haven't seen that. That was a Gardein ad. This little girl asked her dad, does, uh, you know, chicken come from chicken or whatever she said. And I was like, what the hell is this? And then it's like, for moments like these, there's Gardein. Oh, that was so great. That was so great.